Hi, Chris here from Flipmath. I'm going to take you through a couple of perpendicular bisector equations, seeing as most people were getting them mostly right, but I want to make sure they get them all right and clear up any of the little processes that people are falling apart on in between. So I'm going to look at the process, and it's for each of the questions, we're going to need three things. We're going to need, uh, one, to calculate the gradient. Once we have the gradient, we're going to use that to calculate the perpendicular gradient, which is what we're going to use to pop into our, our equation as M. And then the third thing is going to be the coordinates of the midpoint between the two points. And this will give us our point in the line so that we will be able to use that as X1, Y1. And those three things, the X1, Y1, X1, Y1 and M are the three things that we're going to use to pop into our problems at the end of the day. So let's look at the first one. We're going to calculate the perpendicular bisector through each of the following points. So we're going to start with 1, 1 and 3, 3. And before I do anything, I'm going to draw a very, very slight sketch. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to draw a line there and there. So if I say 1, 1 is roughly about there, and three threes roughly around there. If I was to draw a line connecting those, it would go something like that. Okay, so we want the line, the perpendicular bisector is the line that cuts this line exactly in half at 90 degrees. So we're gonna calculate originally the gradient or the slope of this line, and then use our rules of our perpendicular gradients to calculate the slope of that line. Okay, so with that in mind, let's start this off. So we're going to, let's do it here. Uh, we're going to calculate the first thing. We're going to do find the midpoint first. And if I get the midpoint, the midpoint formula, if I write it down for us, is going to be is x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2 all right so or basically just um an average of our x coordinates so if we call that x1 and that x2 and the average of our y coordinates y1 and y2 and if i take that on uh, x1 is 1 and x2 is 3 or we'll divide that by two. And similarly, the first y coordinate is one and the second y coordinate is three. And we'll divide that by two as well. Once I do that, that's one plus three is four divided by two, same as the other one, four divided by two. And ultimately, I'm gonna get my midpoint to be two, two. And we're gonna use that, and that is gonna be our x1 and y1 we're going to use later on. So that's the first bit of information that we need and that we're going to use. The second part, we're going to calculate the gradient or the slope of this line. So we're going to calculate the slope of the green line first, this one here. All right, uh, and to do that, we're going to use our gradient formula. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or the rise over one, if you've been taught that way or otherwise. So same thing, I'm going to use my second y coordinate and take away my first, my second x coordinate and take away my first. That gives me 2 over 2 and that equals 1. That gives us the gradient of that line. We need the gradient of this line, this boy right here. So it's at 90 degrees 2 and I'm just going to put the general rule down here. Perpendicular, that's the little symbol that I'm going to use for perpendicular. Uh, gradients multiply together to give you minus one. So if I take this gradient and I'm going to come a perpendicular gradient m, when I multiply those two things together, one times m, I will get minus one. And if I solve that for m and it kind of already is solved, I will get that the perpendicular gradient is minus one. So that's the perpendicular gradient in my dodgiest handwriting. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take these values and I'm going to highlight this 
So we're going to use that value, the m equals minus 1, and the 2, 2. And we're going to substitute those into our equation. So we're going to substitute those into our y minus y1 equals m upon x minus x1. And if I do that, I'll get y minus, well, my y1 is 2. And my m is minus 1. And I've got x minus, and my y coordinate from, or my x coordinate from above from the midpoint is 2. I am going to multiply that out. So I'll have y minus 2 equals, and then I'll have minus x plus 2. I'm going to bring my good old friend minus 2 across. It's going to change sign to become plus 2, and eventually my answer will be y equals minus x and then plus 2 plus your 2 gives you your 4. And that is the equation of the perpendicular bisector or the line that cuts the previous one in half at 90 degrees. So we're going to do another example. This time I might try and speed it up a little bit um, by taking you through the three steps again and I'm going to label it the same. I also will start off by drawing a little sketch for you. So I'm going to draw a quick sketch to help illustrate. 2 minus 1 is going to be here. And 4 minus 3 is going to be there. If I draw a line connecting them, it's not going to look like that, but it's going to look roughly like that. We're looking for the perpendicular bisectors to the line that goes 90 degrees to that. Roughly something like that. So we need to calculate this midpoint. The slope of this line and then ultimately the slope of that line and if i go with that intention uh, hopefully it'll all work out so the first part we're going to work out is our midpoint and that's whoops x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. i'm going to label my points from before, so if x1, y1, x2, y2, and it's something that I see many of you not doing, is labeling those points and therefore making errors and substitution when you pop them in. So I've got my x1 is a 2, my x2 is a 4. I'm going to take that and divide by 2. And if I do the same with the y coordinates, my y1 is minus 1, my y2 is my minus 3. I'm going to divide that by 2. That's going to be 6 over 2. And minus 4 over 2. What's that? Uh, if I was down, I'll get 3 minus 2. That's my midpoint, or the bit that I'm going to use as my x1, y1 later on. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to work out the equation or the gradient of our original line. So our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If I do that, I've my, my y2 is minus 3, minus, minus 1, and then I've got 4, take away 2 in the bottom. So the second x coordinate is 4, the second, or first x coordinate is 2, as you can see. Once I simplify that down, I'll have minus 3, the minus minus becomes a plus, uh, and a minus 3 plus 2 gives me minus, or plus 1, sorry, gives me minus 2, and 4 minus 2 is 2, that's minus 1. If I work up a little bit of my perpendicular gradient to the side of minus 1 times the perpendicular gradient m is going to equal minus 1. And when I rearrange that for m, I'll have minus 1 divided by minus 1, which is the same as Harry Potter times divided by Harry Potter. Anything divided by itself is going to be plus 1. And I'm going to use that value in the equation at the end. So I'm going to use y minus y1 equals m upon x minus x1. I'll be y minus, and my y coordinate of my midpoint is minus 2. My gradient is going to be just plus 1. And then of x minus my wonderful x coordinate from the point, which is 3. 
I am going to multiply out these brackets. So y minus minus 2 becomes y plus 2. And then if 1 upon x minus 3 is 1 times x is x. And 1 times minus 3 is minus 3. The last thing to do is I'm going to bring a plus 2 over the far side. I'll write out the line in between just for completeness. So that will be y equals x minus 3 as it exists in the A's at the moment. And then minus another 2. So that my final answer is y equals x minus 5. And that's the equation of my perpendicular bisector. Amazing. Next one. Let's go try and go even quicker. Um, not going to draw a sketch this time. Just going to work it out. Midpoint. Add my x, x coordinates together. 3 plus minus 6 is minus 3 divided by 2. Uh, and 2 plus 1 is 3 divided by 2. My midpoint is minus 3 over 2. 3 over 2. My gradient bound to mess it up and I've told you that you may mess it up so I'm going to label these again x2 y2 I'm going to get take my y2 which is 1 take away my y1 which is 2 that's divided by my x2 which is minus 6 minus 3 1 minus 2 is minus 1 and minus 6 minus 3 is minus 9 that ultimately gives me a gradient of 1 over 9 we need our perpendicular gradient we know, what do we know about perpendicular gradients? They multiply together to give us minus 1, so I'm going to take my 1 over 9, my gradient have just worked out. I'm going to multiply it by m, and that's going to equal minus 1. And if I use my calculator or otherwise, minus 1 divided by a ninth, or taking the reciprocal of, will ultimately give me minus 9. And that's our value of our m. There's the point on our line. We're going to use our y2 minus y1 equation. So number three, we've got y minus y1 equals m upon x minus x1. We'll find out everything we need to know. That'll be y minus our y coordinate, which is three over two, equals minus nine upon x minus, and then the x coordinate is minus three over two. I'm gonna tidy this up a little bit because the minus minus here will give me a plus. And I'm gonna multiply in my bracket. So I've got y minus 3 over 2 equals minus 9x and then minus 9 times plus 3 over 2 is minus 27 over 2. Once I bring this over the other side it's going to become a plus 3 over 2. So we'll have y equals minus 9x, whoops, minus 27 over 2, plus 3 over 2, and minus 27 plus 3. If I do that bit at the side, you can use your calculator to help you check that out. That gives me minus 24 over 2. And 20, minus 24 divided by 2 gives me minus 12. So my final answer, once I've tidied up my fractions, is y equals minus 9x minus 12. There there. One more to do. I call these all hits by the way but this should be K. Um, let's go through our steps. We should be a bit more familiar with by now. First one we're going to get the midpoint. And the midpoint minus 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 over 2. It's the first part, and then not minus 2 is minus 2 over 2. This gives us a midpoint of 1 minus 1. Uh, our gradient is y2 minus y1, which is nothing, divided by x2, which is 3, minus minus 1. That gives me minus 2 over 3 plus 1, which is 4. It ends up to be minus a half. I need... A perpendicular gradient to that. The perpendicular gradient, so of minus a half m equals minus one, 
When I divide across by minus a half, I will get my perpendicular gradient to be plus 2. And then last but not least, I'm going to use my y minus y1 equals m upon x minus x1. So if y minus minus 1 equals 2 upon x minus 1. Let's tidy this up. The minus minus 1 becomes plus 1. 2 upon x is 2x. And 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. And once I rearrange that equation, that will give me y equals 2x minus 3. And there's your equation of your perpendicular bisector. There's one more left to do. I suggest at the very least that you have this done already and uh, you can just check the answer. So the first part that I'm going to do is I'm going to do just like before. Is I'm going to do my midpoint. 1 plus 6 is 7 over 2. And 2 minus 5 divided by 2 is minus 3 over 2. Not the easiest midpoint in the world, but that's that's what it gives you. And then the gradient is y2, which is minus 5, minus y1, which is 2, over 6 minus 1. So it gives you minus 7 over 5, which we're going to get the perpendicular gradient of. So we know that minus 7 over 5 times the perpendicular gradient m equals minus 1. If I do minus 1 divided by minus 7 over 5, using my calculator or otherwise, I will get that m is equal to 5 sevenths. I'm going to plug this into my equation. y minus y1 equals m upon x minus x1. We're going to get some nasty fractions, but that shouldn't scare you, should it? Because you're going to let your calculator do most of it. Uh, the minus 3 over 2 is your y1. I'm going to put in my m as 5 over 7. And the minus 7 over 2 out. I'm going to multiply my brackets. So I'm going to have y... Sorry. Bless me. Uh, I'll have y plus 3 over 2 then because the minus minus 3 over 2 becomes a plus. I'll have 5 over 7 x. And when I multiply 5 over 7 times minus 7 over 2, I will get minus 5 over 2. The last thing that I've left to do, and again, many of you will use your calculator for it, when I bring the plus 3 over 2 over, it will become a minus. So we'll have y equals 5 over 7x minus 5 over 2, and then minus another 3 over 2. And I can tidy up the minus 5 over 2 and minus 3 over 2. And that gives me minus 8 over 2. I'm fine enough, minus 8 divided by 2 is minus 4. So my final answer is y equals 5 over 7x minus 4. And I hope that you got that, because out of them all, that's the more difficult of all of the equations. And it's difficult because obviously you get uh, a somewhat nasty perpendicular gradient. In fact, you get a pretty nasty ordinary gradient as well. Uh, and because of the minus signs in there, multiplying in the fractions. But again, like I said many times before, you can use your calculator for those to help you along. If you have any problems, please give me a uh, bell, give me a ring, give me an email, any of those things. I'll come and sit down and work through any problems that you're having. But as I just noted, most of you were doing it quite right without necessarily always getting the right answer. All right. Take care. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.